Hi everyone, welcome to Artspace Mackay. My name is Tracy Heathwood, I'm the director of Artspace Mackay. And this morning we're doing things a little bit differently um, with our current situation in mind. I have here with me this morning, Roz Jones. It's a great pleasure to have Roz here with us this morning. Roz is an incredibly passionate local art collector and artist in her own right. And at Artspace Mackay we've been really really fortunate that we've been able to loan over 60 artworks from Roz's personal collection to display here at Artspace Mackay as part of an exhibition entitled Art of Collection. And we've invited Roz in this morning to ask her a few questions about her passion for collecting. So to kick things off, Roz, I just wondered if you could talk a little bit about when your passion for collecting art began. When, when I was quite young, I think I made my first purchase, um, which was quite a significant one, when I was probably in my early 20s. Fantastic. Do you remember which piece you... Um, uh, Lionel Lindsay. So the piece I bought was Lionel. It was a print, uh, Spanish, had a Spanish um, theme to it. And I just spent some, I'd just been living in Spain for a year, so I was very taken with that fact. I bought a little bit of Spain back with me. I felt, oh, oh I, could, I could have that. And that was, that was the start from there on. Um, when I saw something I loved, if I could afford it, I bought it. Fantastic. And it's a great point. I know that very much your love of travel is kind of intrinsically part of the way that you collect. How do you decide what art you're going to, to, to take home with you and to purchase? If you love it, buy it. It's what I tell what I tell people, yeah. and and that's how I do it. I try continually to say to myself, "You can love it and admire it. You don't have to own it." <laughs> but uh, as you can see, that hasn't worked every time. No. But I still try and do that. That that I don't always have to own it, and I've seen a lot that I that I've enjoyed that I don't own, obviously. But sometimes. Um, I just bring a piece of my holiday back with me and relive it on a daily basis when I see it on my wall. Yeah, and I think as an artist, um, you know, when you create something and you release it out into the world, it's a little bit like children, you know. It's kind of, it feels nice when you know that it's going to somebody who really appreciates it. It's going to a, a good home. Makes a really big difference, I think, so. Yes, puppies. There we go. I like that analogy. That's great. Um, how has investing in art in this way enriched your life? Well, investing is an interesting word because I, I had a brother who since passed away who was a great art collector and maybe that was an influence on me. But he was an investor. He, he bought paintings because of their value and because of... Um, the hope that they will increase in value. I, I've never done that and, and it would be foolish of me to do it because I would never want to part with them anyway. Um, but it's certainly an investment in, in my well-being um, to fill my world, my world and my, my walls with art. Um, it's, it's an injection of, of adrenaline to me every day to look at the wall and just focus on one particular piece and remember how and where I bought it and, and uh, the person that painted it. Um, I can't tell you how, how important that is to me and although my walls are still covered, there's not a gap in sight. Um, to come in here today and look at the wall, I realise how much I've missed a lot of the ones yeah, that are there. I'm sure. We feel really um, so appreciative and I'm sure that they're like long lost friends at the moment on our walls. They'll be pleased to get them back. Um, that's a really good point. 
this particular installation of this exhibition for us, um, the approach was really different. So um, we really wanted to bring into the gallery that sense of what it's like in your home and the way that you present your works literally on every single available <laughs> piece of wall space and that idea of, of those amazing salon hangs in your home, literally from floor to ceiling. So, Roz, I know that the way that we've presented your collection here at Artspace Mackay is quite different to the way that we would usually present an exhibition of works and that was really important it was important for us to bring a sense of what your house is like and the way that you present your works in your own home so the salon hang I think has become a really important part of this particular display can you talk a little bit about um, that process of coming up with the selection of works and the way that they were going to be displayed? Um, it was a very interesting process and, and I'm very grateful that, that um, I had the input from, from um, Lauren and, and Emily and we worked together and they were very accommodating for my, my um, things. See, one of the interesting things was when they first came, I, I looked at my Gwyn Hanson Pickett pieces and I have them in every room in my house as well as using them every day of my life in my pantry and I thought they're such an intricate part of my collection. I would, I would like them included but I couldn't quite think how it was going to happen except to bring the piece of furniture that some of them were sitting on and the day that Lauren and Emily came and I mentioned that they said funny that you you mentioned that but we were thinking the same thing so you know they were they were very into um, accommodating anything that that I was wanting to do um, and it, it just evolved really because it occurs to me that um, the placement of the works next to each other and the way that you do that is this whole other creative process. So you yourself are your, you know, your the curator of your of your home and those decisions that you make about the placements of the works that you've collected become really interesting and a, a really important part of the whole sort of aesthetic of your place. And I know that that was something thing that the team were really um, very interested in having you involved in as well. So um, do you want to talk a little bit about how that process evolved? Yes, and it, it does evolve and it's quite important to me because I'm not, I'm not going to take credit as a curator of what's on my walls at the moment because pieces are slotting into spaces that they shouldn't be in um, just to fill the spaces because of what's left. And, um, and I, I, I'm not totally happy with it, but I'm not happy with a vacant space either. But um, the other thing that was difficult is I have an area of my house my covered outdoor area where I tend to have all my really bright coloured um, naive art all together and in my living areas more my quiet pieces so that was a challenge to me and, and to the team from here I think and how we were going to integrate the two pieces um, and I thought the best thing to do is not overthink that Let's just do it. Don't don't try and overthink it. Um, Lauren likes to have things flow, and I, as soon as I started to try and think how things were going to flow, I kind of lost the plot. So I thought, no, no, I'm I'm, I'm not going to think of how things flow. I'm I'm just going to to do it the way it feels right. Mm -hmm. And and we we all had input mm -hmm. there. Yeah and we started off with big pieces and then filled, filled the gaps 
um, and in a way that's what I've done at home. But I'm, I do give a fair amount of thought to what room, what pieces go in what room. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and my main living area, mm -hmm. I like pieces to be quieter and and um, softer. And my more covered outdoor area, I'm happy to have as much colour as I can put on the wall. Yeah, yes. So, um, are there any particular favourite works or particular stories connected to any of the works on display here, Roz, that you'd like to share with us? How much time have you got, Tracy? We've got time. <laughs> Come on. Two, two to three. Um, well, there's one work there which looks like it's a dog that's painted for the Day of the Dead in Mexico and it was done by a local artist uh, who's since moved down to Gladstone and a friend and I knew that my black poodle had a terminal illness. Um, she was 20 so to, to have um, found out that she's got cancer at, at age 20 wasn't such a tragic thing um, but I had to I'd had her for 20 years so I had to uh, resign myself to the fact that I was going to lose her so um, I asked my friend if she would come over and would take some photos and if she would paint paint her and that's what she did and she did a really interesting thing. I'd just seen, I can't remember the name of it, but I'd just been to the movies with my grandsons and we'd watched um, an animated movie um, about the Day of the Dead and the fact that when dogs died and they went to that other place, which was very colourful, they became multicoloured. So I said to her, is there any way, you know, you can paint indigo so it looks like my dog, but she's multicoloured? And she said, not a problem, not a problem. And that's, that's what she did. And she, she put a clear coat of plastic over the photo, traced around it so she had the dog and its size and and um, it's it's why now when I look at it I recognize my dog straight away yeah. although it doesn't actually look at all like her and I sent her a few um, photos of different um, things that I like the angel wings with the heart and a few things like that mm -hmm. and she just took it on board and when she gave me the painting I just thought it was absolutely exactly what I wanted. Yeah. I was going to look at it and not be sad, but be happy. Yeah. She'd uh, painted the background indigo, which yeah. was my dog's name. She'd, she'd looked up um, the seeds and the flower of the indigo plant, and she'd incorporated that in the painting. So for me, I have it in the kitchen next to the kitchen sink, and every time I look at it, I remember um, there's such joy, painting, yeah, there's such joy in that yeah. painting, it's really special. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, very special. Roz, that's been amazing to talk to you this morning. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us about, about your collection, your approach to collecting, or this opportunity to have your works displayed at Artspace? Well, thank you for inviting me to display my work here, because when I thought about it, I thought mm, it's going to be a bit of a bit of an exercise. But I love the opportunity to show people that if you see something or you have something that you love, don't leave it in a cupboard or a drawer. Put it on the wall and enjoy it. And I I just feel that if that's what's uh, happened, I I found it really interesting at the opening. Um, young people, and it happened not once but not twice three times young people came and stood in front of the wall 
and either took selfies or had friends take yeah. photos of them, like it's some kind of tourist attraction. <laughs> I like that too. And I thought that yeah. was so quirky. Yeah. This is in a gallery. Yeah. Um, and with them doing that or having that interest mm. to, to want to put themselves in the space, I thought maybe those young people will go home and start putting some bits and pieces on their wall. Mm. And the other thing I like to show is it doesn't matter. As you know, some of the pieces here belong to my grandchildren. Mm. Some pieces come from op shops. Um, if, you, if you enjoy it and you want to look at it, put it somewhere where you can see it. Yeah. And on the wall it's out of the way and you can enjoy it every day of your life. And it, it gives me a lot of pleasure to be able to um, bring it in here and display it and um, I hope that it'll inspire someone to wander I think might be thinking about bringing a few pieces out and putting it up on her wall and it'd be well worth the effort um, if that's if that's the outcome. Well, thanks again, Roz, for taking some time out to come and have a chat to us. I know that you've inspired a whole range of people who've been lucky enough to come in and, and see this exhibition. Um, and for those of you who have questions for Roz, um, get in contact with the gallery and let us know because Roz is really happy to answer any questions that you have. And uh, we look forward to seeing you probably in this virtual space sometime soon. Thank you.